Oh, this is a mistake. Boing, 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 boing. In this video, I'm gonna make an entire game with no Wi-Fi. And if I fail at any point, can't figure something out. I don't think I can do this. And for punishment, I'm gonna have to go outside. It's bad enough already. And not only touch some grass, but eat it. I've been playing an awful lot of the Dino Wi-Fi game in Chrome recently. I thought it would be fairly fun to try and remake this. Booting into Unity, we can throw together a simple scene and realize something key to making this jumping on the ground mechanic without even needing to check if we're on the ground. Which might at first sound impossible, but the only things the player can collide with are the cactuses, burps, and the ground. The big great thing to notice here is that colliding with all but one of these ends the game immediately. We don't need to send any of that information to the physics system, we can just pause the game, throw it away, put it in the bin, you're dead. Now we have a bouncing box, but this is pretty boring. Let's spice things up with a bit of art. I always like to start with a rough sketch and a thin mono line of the rough shapes I want from the character, then going back in in a new layer and defining each body part. I really recommend this approach as it's much more flexible to change during the initial sketch phases if you aren't quite liking something. Like me here, I completely forgot the legs, so we can just go back to the sketch add those in, and it's really simple to flesh it out later. For the finishing touches, we now bring it over into Affinity Design, which has all the benefits of Photoshop other than its one-time purchase instead of subscription model. This sucks because I love being extorted by Adobe for money I don't have to control my own computer, but hey, you know, sometimes we don't get what we want. I'll just edge up the PSD file over to my Mac and, oh my god. Have I mentioned that I'm fine? <laughs> Although me not having internet might have had you fooled, I'm in fact not living 65 million years ago. So I can't go outside and grab a picture reference of a dinosaur and I can't look one up. So I compromised and chose the next closest thing. A goose. A Wimbledon goose. A Wimbledon goose that... Ducks. Get it? Ha! Now for the fun part of making this as perfectly accurate to the original as possible. By recording and looking through every frame, we see the dino's jump takes 16 ticks to reach the peak of its height, which is exactly two dinos high. It holds there for two ticks and then takes another 17 ticks to come back down again. The problem is that Unity doesn't let you just put those numbers in. Instead, you only have a hard to understand force upwards and a gravity downward. But what if we could make it easier? Make your jump height and time variables we can use in the inspector. To turn these into what Unity wants, the gravity is two times the jump height divided by the time to jump square. The jump force is the gravity times the time to jump. Finally, come into Unity, edit project settings, physics 2D, and change gravity to 0, minus 1. Now when you jump, use these values instead, giving an almost perfect recreation. Although visually it works great, it doesn't actually help against the birds as the goose's box collider isn't getting any smaller so we still hit them. My first idea was to simply have two colliders for being tall or ducked, but this introduced a weird behavior when we're on the ground, press down to duck, box collider is disabled, so we're not on the ground anymore, so we unduck, and then the one of the disables, and then it activates, and then blah, 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 blah. This. Using just one collider and resizing it gave me the same result. I was so close to giving up and failing this challenge, but out of nowhere I had an idea that means I don't have to just yet. One box collider doesn't work. Two box colliders don't work, and there's only one logical next step. 17 box collider. Now I'm f***ing with you. Just three. This setup works with the ground detection collision always enabled, and the other two being toggled on and off when needed. That was an absolute ducking nightmare. Cactus alert. They're really spiky. Don't let them touch you when they come at you at four ticks per whip. Bird alert. Their dangly legs mean you have to duck under them at the same speed. Other bird alert. These ones been drinking a bit and forgot it can fly. I should have to jump over it instead. Bonus round. Boom, scoring. Boom, death and restarting. Boom, light mode. Shit, go back. The cool thing about the scoring system is that depending on how many points you have, it changes the speed of the obstacles and what type of obstacles are more likely to spawn. Sound is a really tricky one without internet. Now, I do technically have a bunch of sounds pre-downloaded that I've used in other projects before, but that kind of feels like cheating as it's basically just downloaded from the internet, even if it wasn't within this time period. I was kind of stumped for a bit until I realized I can make them all myself. Oh, this is a mistake. Boing, 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 boing. Happy coding, everyone!